Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome, my name is Monica, and today we're going to do a bit of a different video. So I saw this trending on Twitter today, like earlier today actually, and I felt like I had a little bit of an obligation to kind of jump in and give whatever tips and tricks that I had, because unfortunately we are dealing with, I think the WHO is very close to calling this a pandemic of the coronavirus, also normally I guess it's called, um, I am not a doctor. It is the uh, coronavirus that is causing COVID-19, or it's COVID-19 causing the coronavirus. I am sorry, I'm an editor. I am not a scientist. But uh, either way, there is kind of a flu-like pandemic going around. And I've not only have I been told to be ready to like kind of start working remotely, on a moment's notice. There are a lot of people who may have never worked remotely before who now may be kind of forced to with this coronavirus. And on Twitter today, I saw this trending and the original tweet was from Emily Lakdawala. And her tweet was, friends, there are going to be a lot of newly of people newly working from home starting this week and it will be a difficult transition for some if and only if you are experienced at working from home please reply with tips for working effectively and avoiding distractions i work home fairly often now with my job i work home at least one day a week and i just thought like with this happening and with my platform. I felt like I had kind of a bit of a duty just to kind of give my tips and tricks because I hated working from home. I was not good at it. I couldn't stay focused. I, I just, it was just messy and bad when I first started. So for the first six months of my job, I, I went into the office every day, even though you're, you're allowed one working from home day a week. So it took me a while to get used to it and get all my tips and tricks together. I actually spent my lunch hour today getting together like a little actual list of 10 of the best tips that have worked for me. One that I actually can't fully do, but I did work around it. So uh, I just wanted to give you my tips in case anyone is newly working from home from someone who has actually recently gone through the transition of having to work from home kind of that often. I also want to link, um, probably down below, uh, NPR. I try to listen to NPR in the mornings. They also just did a, uh, story this morning. I'm filming this on Monday night. I literally just worked a full day, had dinner, and I took off my makeup and I'm sitting down and I'm filming this. They did a kind of short story about, um, people having to not now work remotely. Some for the first time, some who have worked remotely for a while. So I'll have that linked as well. And I went through a little bit of the Twitter, uh, trending page when it was trending. But uh, I have 10 trips and they all really helped me. And this is coming from someone who did never, like never worked from home and now does it regularly. So the first tip I have is to wake up at the same time you would normally wake up and stick to your schedule. I always wake up at the same time when I'm working from home. It's very tempting to sleep in. This is a very comfy bed. It's tempting to sleep in because you don't have to commute. You really don't have to do as much as you would have to do normally. But I find that whenever I slept in significantly, <laughs> My whole day was thrown off because I am a morning person. I need time in the morning to get myself situated, to get myself awake. I shower in the morning. I do my makeup in the morning. We'll get to that in a little bit. But um, waking up at the same time really helps me. So if anything, I will sleep in maybe 30 minutes, if that. I tend to just wake up at my normal time because if I do sleep in, kind of the day is shot. It doesn't feel like a work day. The whole point of working from home uh, when you have to kind of in this sense is to still make it feel like a work day and when you're sleeping in your body Your mind isn't thinking. Oh, this is a Monday. It's thinking. Oh, this is a Saturday, <laughs> you know So uh, I found that it's best if you just kind of stick to within 30 minutes of your normal wake-up time Tip number two is just stick to your full normal morning routine i.e. basically doing everything that you would do if you were about to like walk out the door and go to work Again, it's best to stick to a schedule. So if you have a normal schedule, if you wake up at a certain time, if you shower in the morning, if you do your hair in the morning, if you do your makeup in the morning, make sure you do all of those still before you start working from home. Because even though you are working from home, you're working. And uh, cutting out that commute shouldn't mean that you don't do the exact same things you should do when you're going to work. A lot of what I do in my job, uh, I tend to work from home on days where I have a lot of meetings. 
every single one of my meetings are a like a video chat. So at the very least, I have to look my regular day to day best from the waist up. And even if you don't have to, even if all you have are just like calls or emails, it helps. It gets you in the right like mind set for working if you do your normal routine. I'm not saying you have to put on makeup or get dressed up if you don't normally do that for work. Not at all. Do exactly what you would do if you're about to walk out the door and go to work. But what you do is you do all that and then you sit down and you start working. Now that you're all set, you've done your morning routine, you're ready to work, the best tip that I can say is to try and work in the same place every day and try to do your best to keep it away from your relaxation spaces. I am a bit um, hindered here because I just have one room. I live with family and they all kind of live downstairs. This is the attic, so this is basically all the space that I have. When I work from home, I'm sitting here. This is actually a desk and I do my work here as well as on my YouTube work. So I film my YouTube videos here. I do all my work here because I do have a pretty sizable desk. I've got a full Ikea desk right here. I'll throw a picture in from the angle that I am seeing so you can see how kind of big my desk is. But uh, when I do work from home, we'll get at this point in a little bit, uh, I, I sit here and I work and I do my best to make this basically a work zone. Um, I'll talk in a little bit about um, separating your work hours from your relaxation hours. But if you have the room, if you have a guest bedroom, if you can go down to your dining room, if you can go down anywhere that's not in your, kind of your relaxation space, it's best to work there. And it's best to kind of pick one spot. That's like, this is my working spot. Ideally, you would have a desk in a guest bedroom or have an office, but not all of us definitely can't have that luxury. So I'll talk in a little bit about how even though I work from like right here, I differentiate it from my relaxation time. Okay, so the next tip that I can give you, which I wish I had because I completely shot my posture doing this, is take care of your posture. <laughs> Theoretically, um, if you had more time to prepare to work from home more often, you'd be able to find a nice ergonomic chair. Not all of us have that luxury. So I'm going to show you how I have my chair right now. I literally just have a, a chair from my dining room set, which is basically, I think, a set from Ikea. It's like this, I don't even know if it's going to show up on camera. It's this plastic little chair. And the posture actually is pretty nice on this. You don't want something that's too slouchy. You don't want a relaxation kind of like lounge chair. You want a chair that's gonna push your back up. So this has just plastic and it pushes me up a little bit. And as you can see on top of it, I have a blanket. So the first thing is when you're sitting in one spot for a long time and if it's not a um, padded chair, you're gonna get sore and it's gonna hurt. <laughs> Uh, cause you know, if you go into the office, you've got those nice, big, ergonomic, like plushy chairs. You kind of need to do your best to simulate that at home. So I've got the blanket and then I also keep my little Corgi butt pillow. So this was a gift from a good friend of mine. And what I do is I use this just on my lower back because I really, if you saw me earlier, I had better posture. Now I'm slouched. So if I push this right below my lower back, now I'm sitting up nicely. And this is going to help you a lot too. You can also sit on a pillow. I do that sometimes too. And I did that before I put this blanket there. Anything just to get you sitting upright. Because you're probably not going to have the perfect computer desk chair at your house. So you got to do your best to fake it. And that's going to help you. Because if you're working full days, like 9 to 5, 8 to 5, 8 to 4, you're going to be in this one position for a long time. And you want to make sure you give yourself basically every uh, chance to succeed. And you don't want to like hunch over like this. You don't want to have this here. Like you don't want to like, I don't know, you get crunched up like this. Because it's really hard when you, you're working at a space that's not typically a workspace. Uh, it's easy to fall into like a hunch. Something I like to do a lot, I notice, is I'll sit like this on my desk. I'll be on YouTube, I'll be editing, I'll be doing, I'll be like this. I have to constantly remind myself to like get up and have better posture and work like you're supposed to. Uh, my company actually has a full, because so many people work remotely, they have a full kit, which is kind of like the uh, work from home starter guide. And a huge part of that is ergonomics and just making sure that you're set up correctly uh, so that when you're working, you're not 
harming yourself. And that's really important. I didn't think it was that important at first, but when you're working from home and you're sitting here for eight hours, it's so important. All right, so you've done your morning routine. You're sitting down in a nice posture. You're ready to work. The most important thing I can stress is that you need to schedule your work. I like to work from home on days where I have the most meetings, which for me, that is Thursday. I have a lot of check-in meetings, so I have meetings from literally 9 a.m. to like 12, quick break, 12 to like 2. I have straight back-to-back -back calls, meetings, whatever, maybe with a few minutes in between. Those are my best days to work from home because at home, it's quiet. <laughs> you can focus on the meeting. You can take your time with like your meeting notes and everything. Uh, speaking from the perspective of someone who works in an open office. So I work in an open office, which means that there are no cubicles. I basically have a desk. Like remember when you were in middle school and you had those pods where you had to work in group projects? I basically have one of those. <laughs> and so it's easier for me to focus on meetings and everything when I'm at home. So that's what I tend to pick when I work from home. But even if I happen to work from home on a day where I don't have a lot of meetings, I will chunk my time out. I will especially do this in my work calendar. So if you can, if you've got your calendar, uh, chunk out times. So I'm gonna spend half an hour working on this project. I'm gonna spend an hour working on this audit. I'm gonna spend an hour working on this pricing spreadsheet. Just give a vague chunk outline of your day. Even schedule in times to check my email because that is what's going to keep you on track when you're home, because there's going to be so many other things you can do when you're home. I could lay down and take a nap. I could read a book. I could go eat something. I could literally do anything. So it takes so much discipline and planning to focus, which I think is the hardest thing to do. So the best way to get around that that I've found is to schedule in my time, literally. And along with that, set yourself like a, a reminder like a uh, alarm uh, a lot of people recommend that you leave your phone like somewhere else but I get like text messages and calls from people when I work from home because I don't have my office desk so when I'm not at work technically my cell phone is my phone so I have to be around it I have to keep an eye on it as well but if you don't have to for your job I would highly recommend leaving your cell phone somewhere else maybe in a totally different room so you're not like tempted to just go and scroll on Instagram or whatever but um, what you should do is set a reminder and at least once an hour, I would say every 45 minutes, just get up. It's uh, easy if you finally get into the groove and start working to sit here hunched over for hours. That's also not good for you. <laughs> you need to get up, either go to the bathroom, go get some water, even just walk around my room. It helps because you're sitting in one spot, you're working and it takes its toll on you. You need to get up. I think the recommendation is at least once an hour, every half hour if you can, but if you're working on a project or you're in meetings, it's not always, you're not always easy to do. That is also helpful because when I'm in the office, I'm going up, I'm getting coffee, I'm saying hi to other people, I'm going to the bathroom, I'm getting up at least once an hour to do something. So I feel like when you work from home, you don't want to get rid of that. You still want to get up because you could also cramp up. It's just not good for you to not move for that amount of time. So even if it's just to get up and do a few like laps around your room, do that. And if you can, if you are on a call that is just a call and not like a video conferencing call, get up and walk around while you're on it if it's not too distracting for you because that'll also really help. Something I forgot to mention. So when I do work from here, I can't put my phone away, but my personal laptop, I have a MacBook and I have a work laptop. My personal laptop goes away because I am too tempted to not even scroll and do stuff. I'm too tempted to work on YouTube during my work hours. Like I really want to like edit or do a thumbnail when I have a few minutes in between meetings and I don't let myself do that. I literally turn off my computer, close it, and I put it like in my other room because it's too distracting. And when I'm working, I need to focus on work. Okay, so I, I squished together my tip number six and seven because tip number six was just focus on your work for your scheduled time slots. And then tip number seven was make sure you get up and move. So technically that's six and seven. Uh, tip number eight is treat yourself to lunch. And I don't mean like going out to eat. You are home. So hopefully you have the nice scheduled at least 30 minutes to an hour for lunch. And since you're home, cook yourself something. I love to do like a grilled cheese and a soup 
or like a nice salad, anything that I wouldn't get at the office. I tend to either bring leftovers or like a lean cuisine to the office. So I try to treat myself since I'm home to something I can only have or make when I am home and to actually take my full lunch hour. Cause you know how easy it is to sit and keep working, even at the office, like I'm guilty of working through my lunch break. I'll be eating and still answering emails and stuff. But I feel like when you work from home, you feel that more. So you should definitely take any breaks that you need. Uh, definitely your lunch break. Take the full allotted time. Leave your laptop upstairs or somewhere. Go to a different area. Make yourself something and mindfully eat it. That's really going to help you. It's also going to really help you structure your day because that's going to be basically for most people your midway point. If it's not lunch, maybe have an early dinner or something. Something to give, break apart your morning from your afternoon. Tip number nine is once you're done working your full day, stop. It's very tempting for us workaholics to want to keep working, but I, I guess this only works for hour, hourly employees. I'm hourly, so I have to stick to a certain number of hours. Even if there's more to get done, it can get done tomorrow. I definitely plan enough that there's never anything I'm really late on or anything super urgent that happens. And if it is, my uh, manager knows I'm hourly and knows that I have strict like hours blocked off on my calendar, typically eight to five. And outside of that, I can't be reached because I'm hourly because <laughs> uh, we don't do overtime, really, which is nice for me because I do have like a nice set 40 hours. And outside of that, I'm not responsible for really anything. But it was hard when I first started working from home because I'm like, well, I'm still here. I can keep working. No, stop. What I like to do is when I am done working and to help me differentiate between my working time and my relaxation time because I'm still in the same room, I, what I do is I pack up all my stuff. And I guess I could start by also talking about everything I take out. <laughs> so I have a work laptop that I have to carry like with me to work every day. So I have this big backpack and I have this laptop case and I have my um, earbuds and my key in here. So the key actually goes to uh, the, my desk drawers. So they all lock when I'm not at the office. So I make sure I lock everything up that's at the office. And then when I'm here, I obviously don't need that. But I use the headphones a lot. So I've got my laptop here. And what I do is what helps me a lot is setting it up on a raised laptop stand. I'll throw a picture in right here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But that really helps just elevate the screen closer to your eye level so that you're not hunched over like this working on a laptop. Obviously, the best thing would be to have an external screen, which is what I have at my desk. I have a big external monitor that I plug my laptop into and that's how I work. Not everyone's going to have one of those available at home, but if you do, yes, use that. If not, I found that these stands work wonders for me. I've gotten mine at Ikea. They're literally a couple of bucks. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon. And that's really going to help you when you're working remotely from strictly a laptop. On top of that, I have an extra charger for my work laptop that I literally, it stays here. It stays at my house. And I have a mouse because a mouse really helps. When you're just working with a laptop trackpad, a mouse really helps when you're trying to like do work with big spreadsheets and all that fun stuff. So those two things live here. So the first thing I would do when I'm done working is wrap up my mouse wrap up my charger, they get put away in my electronics drawer, and then I put away my laptop and everything, my notebook, my pens, into my actual work backpack. And then that work backpack gets put like in the closet. It's away from me. It's out of sight. It's out of mind. Once that is done, I then change the lighting in my room. When I work, I tend to keep this lamp that you kind of see in the background of my videos, I keep that in full blast. I have three different settings for my lamp. I have five bulbs in total. Three of them are cool white light. Two of them are warm light. And you can have all five of them on at the same time. What I like to do, which just helps me differentiate things, is when I'm working or when I'm filming, I have all five lights on. Or I just have the three cool lights on. Because that kind of, for me, um, replicates the fluorescence of, like, uh, overhead office lighting. So it helps me just get into the mindset of, oh, work. 
when I'm at home, when I'm relaxing, when I'm just hanging out in my room, I only have the two warm light bulbs on. And that just for me, especially in this room that's full of wood, the warm light is so cozy and it's warm and it's relaxing, which is closer to like these, like these are very warm lights. So I like to have just the warm lights here and just the warm lights here. And to me, that signals relaxation, hanging out, chill. When I have the bright warm light, when I have the bright cool lights on, to me that signifies work or filming. Okay, so just as a close up to show you guys what I'm talking about, these two are my warm light bulbs and these three are the cool. So when I turn on just the warm, this is my cozy lighting, my relaxation lighting. If I turn on the next setting, which is just the cool lights, it is much more like stark, it is bright, it feels like an office. And when I have all of them on, I get a nice blend of colors, but it also signals to me like brightness, working, whatever. But that's kind of what I'm talking about. And that's helped me a lot. It sounds kind of like a silly little thing, but the tiny things you can do to differentiate between your working hours and your not working hours, the lighting, the smells, the, the putting all your work stuff into your bag and putting it away when work is done. Little things like that can help you really uh, come to terms with and recognize the difference between your working hours and your relaxing hours. Because when you don't have a commute to kind of like up, like build yourself up and unwind from work, it can kind of all blend into one big mush and you, you really don't want that. Okay, and my absolute last tip is to get out of the house when you can. And if you can, safely. If you're working remotely constantly, it's easy to get into a rut where you literally don't leave your house unless you're going to like grocery shop. If this is going to be a more long-term thing for you, make sure every now and then to leave the house. If you go get a coffee in the morning, if you go out for lunch every now and then, don't make it a habit, but every now and then treat yourself to go out for something as opposed to always staying indoors. Because always staying in is also not good for your mental health. You need to break out of that routine sometimes, the same way you would if you worked in the office. Sometimes you'll go out to lunch with your colleagues, sometimes you'll go out for a coffee, sometimes you'll just, I don't know, like I, I work in Hoboken, so sometimes after work I just go out for drinks or I go out for dinner. It's not often, but sometimes I do. So it's always good to make sure you kind of stay also with that part of a routine where you break it. <laughs> Also, a tip that I saw is you could also create your own commute. So if you're cooped up in the house, if you want, or out in the morning, go and walk around your block. Walk around your backyard, if the weather permits. And you can kind of create like your own commute that way. I saw um, a tip from somebody who said that every morning they would do their full morning routine and then get dressed as if they were going to leave and then go out, walk a block, and then come back in and by that point, they were in the right mindset to work. And then at the at the end of the day, they would put all their stuff away, go for another walk with their dog. It also helps if you have a pet <laughs> that you have to walk. And that would signal to them like their commute home the end of the day. So that's honestly, all I see is that it's all about routine. Whatever you want to do that helps you create your routine, that helps you differentiate between your working time and your relaxation time. And if it helps to bookend with walks, do that. But also, make sure you're getting out of the house every now and then. So that is everything that I had for this video. I know it's a bit different. We'll be back to our normally scheduled programming on Friday. But I saw this trending and I had experience with like having to start working from home fairly often even though I really didn't want to. Even now, if you give me the option, I'll go into the office. But I've gotten to a point now where I can work from home efficiently and I don't hate it. It's not my favorite thing, but I don't hate it. Especially now when everyone's health and safety is going to be on the line at some point. It, it is comforting to know that I can work from home if needed and that it's just the option is there. Also because I have to go to work on New Jersey Transit which is literally like the worst mass commuting transit system like in the country. So a lot of canceled trains, a lot of delayed trains. I have to take two trains too so if one's canceled or delayed I can't catch my other one. So it's nice to have the option to work from home uh, when I need to. So that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you work remotely, please leave all of your tips and tricks down below for everyone who may be doing this for the first time now that the coronavirus... Why do I keep hitting my mic? Now that the coronavirus is kind of... 
I don't want to cause like, I don't know, I don't want to be like the news and like cause mass panic and everything, but it is proliferating. And we need to be um, aware, prepared, and informed. Those are the three things. Don't over panic. If you're in the United States, you don't have to buy masks at this point at least. So just be informed, be aware, be prepared. But don't stock up on toilet paper and sanitizer and masks because you're just taking them away from the people that need them. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.